We're going to learn now about graphing equations just by plotting points. I'm sure that you've done this before, and especially with linear equations, I'm sure that you've graphed equations by plotting points. But when you plot points, essentially what we're doing is we're saying we know that there are an infinite number of points on this line or on the curve if you're graphing something that's curved rather than linear. Um, we're simply trying to find enough of them so that we get an idea of what the graph looks like. So for instance, y equals x minus 3. If I know the slope-intercept form, I'll probably just graph it like that. If I don't, I'm just going to make up a couple of values. The general rule is that I will make up a negative value or 2, depending on if it's not linear. This is linear, so I'm only going to find three points. Um, I usually use zero, and then I usually use a positive value or two. Again, looking at this graph, I know that it will be linear, meaning it's going to make a straight line because it's y to the first power and x to the first power. So when you start having squareds or you have a variable that is a denominator, that's when you know the graph will look different. So I'm going to use negative two, zero, and two, which means I'm replacing x with those values and then finding y. So y is equal to x minus 3. So x is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. So y is equal to negative 5, which means I'm going to plot negative 2, negative 5. That's 2 to the left and 5 down. Negative 2, negative 5. When I plug in 0, I get y equals 0 minus 3. 0 minus 3 is, of course, negative 3. So 0 for the x and negative 3 for the y. So that's 0 right or left. Oops, not there. 3 down, not 2 down. And then for my last one, y equals 2 minus 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So 2 comma negative 1 is my last point. 2 to the right, 1 down. So I'm going to connect the dots, and that's my line. So notice at the end of each line I'm putting an arrow because I've only found three of an infinite number of points that goes on forever to the right and goes on forever to the left pointing down. Graphing our next one, as we can see, this one is going to look a little different because this is x squared. So it's a good idea to have um, some sort of picture in your head as to what the graph will look like. Anytime I have a squared value, when the x is squared, I know it's going to be a parabola open up or down like this. So it might be shifted right or left or up or down, or it might even be flipped upside down. But I know that that's what a parabola or a quadratic equation looks like when I graph it. Notice I've left five spaces here instead of just three because I don't really know what to expect. So I might use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So when I'm plugging in my values, I'm plugging them in again for x and then squaring and subtracting. So negative 2 squared is 4, minus 3 is 1, so negative 2 comma 1 would be a point that I would plot. For negative 1, I would get y equals negative 1 squared minus 3. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And I'll plot that point. Plugging in 0 gives me, of course, negative 3. So 0, negative 3. Plugging in 1, I get 1 squared minus 3. 1 squared is 1. Minus 3 is negative 2. So as we can see here, the points were kind of getting closer together, and now they've shifted, and they're turning around to come back up again. And our last one, y equals 2 squared minus 3, which is 4 minus 3, or 1. 2 comma 1, which would be right there. So connecting the dots as best you can. I'm going to have a parabola, again, that goes on forever, up. Um, we will get into this part later, but as you can see, there is a line sort of down the middle of a parabola that does cut it in half. That's called the axis of symmetry. We'll learn all about that in a later lesson when we learn how to graph these um, in an easier way than just plotting points. 
Here's another for us to try by plotting points. Again, this is a square root, and so it's important that we try a lot of points here. So negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. We'll try all of those. So again, notice I'm still plugging in values for x. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and then that would just be the square root of 0 is 0. So negative 3, 0 is a point. Negative 1, so y equals negative 1 plus 3, which is the square root of 2, which is 1.41, etc. So that's somewhere in here. If I plug in 0, 0 plus 3 would of course be the square root of 3. Whoops, I forgot to write my ordered pair. The square root of 3 is about 1.73. So again, it's going to be a little bit closer to that 2. If I plug in 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So 1 comma 2. And if I plug in 3, I get 3 plus 3, which is the square root of 6, which is about 2.45, so pretty close to halfway. Now notice this started here at 0, so I could just start connecting the dots here, but let's see what happens if I plug in negative 4. So negative 4 would be negative 4 plus 3, which would be the square root of negative 1, which we all know is an imaginary number. So it's supposed to be a g. We know that imaginary numbers, we can't graph those. So this graph starts at this point and continues like this. So there are, there's nothing below this. And again, we'll get more into that later when we focus on the graphing, but right now we're just plotting points. This is what that square root would look like. For my next one, we have a couple of things that are different. First of all, this is now an absolute value. So an absolute value is going to either look like this, if it's a y equals equation, or like this, if it's an x equals equation. Now notice, this is an x equals equation, so that is what's different about it as well. So I should be looking at a v that's, you know, sort of crooked, off to the side. Which also means that when I'm making up values to plug in, I'm going to make up values for y. So I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Again, that's for the y value. So to find x, I'm taking negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5, but the absolute value makes it positive 5. But remember, that's not negative 2, 5, that's 5 comma negative 2. So 5 comma negative 2. Plugging in negative 1, negative 1 minus 3 is a negative 4, absolute value makes it positive 4. So again, x comma y would be 4 comma negative 1. Plugging in 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. The absolute value makes it positive 3. So 0, oops, sorry, 3 comma 0, which is right here. x equals 1 minus 3, which of course is negative 2. The absolute value makes it positive 2. So 2 comma 1. And plugging in 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, absolute value is positive 1, so I get 1 comma 2. And as you can see, I have not yet found where that's going to turn around and go the other direction. So now I have to make up another point. So let's say 4. Well, let's do 3, because looking at this, obviously something's going to happen at 3. So if I used 3, that would be 3 minus 3, which is 0, so 0 comma 3. And then if I used 4, I would get 4 minus 1, which is 3. Wait, I did something wrong. 4 minus 3, which is 1. So 1 comma 4 would be 1 comma 4. So that's where we finally find that it turns around and goes the opposite direction. 
So that is what an absolute value with an x equals would look like. Here's one for you to try on your own. I, before you graph it on your own, I want to point out a couple of things. x is isolated here, which means you're going to make up values for y instead of x. And it is quadratic, so we know a quadratic, when it was y equals, looked like this. So when it's x equals, it's going to look like this. So just to give you an idea of what this shape should end up looking like. So press pause, make up some values for y, uh, graph your um, parabola, and then press play to check your work. I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And because I'm really bad at remembering to put it in the correct order, I'm going to go ahead and write those values for y right now so that I don't write them backwards later on. So x equals negative 2 squared minus 3. Negative 2 squared would be 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. So 1 comma negative 2. Plugging in negative 1, I get negative 1 squared, which is 1. Minus 3 is negative 2. So negative 2, negative 1. Plugging in 0, I get 0 minus 3. 0 squared, which is 0. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So negative 3, 0. Plugging in 1, I get 1 squared minus 3, which is 1 minus 3, or negative 2. So that's negative 2 comma 1. And last one, I get 2 squared minus 3, which is 4 minus 3, or 1. So that's 1 comma 2. So now we can see our parabola going in the sideways direction because it was x equals.